You can really hear New Shepherd coming alive. Now, if you're just joining us, we are about T minus a minute and a half. NS35 is a waiting launch to cross the Carmen line with our second payload flight this year. Now, some of the bit checks that we are going through at this moment in time are Afton checks, which help steer the vehicle on ascent and descent. The bridge has retracted. Also, there's something that viewers won't see, and that's the, the engine nozzle. Yeah, so we actually gimbal the engine, and we do that check as well. And this helps maneuver the rocket and ensure a free range of motion on ascent and descent. We're also, of course, keeping an eye on the pressure and temperature and propellant tanks. Both need to stay in the green zone. Beautiful shot there with the sunrise over West Texas and New Shepard on the launch pad. At about T minus 20 seconds here, it is time to go. So we're going to hand it off to Mission Control and launch this rocket. Go, New Shepard, go. Seven, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Command to end the start. Two, one. Mission. Now the stop. And New Shepard has cleared the tower. If you're following along from home, you can note the speed and altitude graphics on your screen to the left. And as the capsule and the booster separate, you'll also be able to see those graphics split and flight. follow their um, ascent and descent as well. And right now, the engine is at 100% power level. A beautiful shot there of the VE3. Begin throttle down for Q limiting. Engine response nominal. And here we are approaching our Q bucket. What is that for well, our viewers who don't know? It's where max there's- Max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Oh, we have the max aerodynamic stress um, on the vehicle. And so we're actually gonna power down the engine as we go through that bucket. Excellent. Mach one vehicle is supersonic. Engine maintaining full throttle. Chamber pressure is nominal. We're about a minute and a half, just passing 60,000 feet. I love shots like this where you can just see the glow of the engine. Yeah, the VE3 shining bright. A great shot from our long range camera. Over 100,000 feet now. And we've also got a camera there on the booster looking back down on West Texas. Begins rattle down. Stand by Miko. For our viewers who are just joining us and don't know, Miko is our main engine cutoff. Miko confirmed. And there you have it. Standby separation. Separation confirmed. 
And as I mentioned, if you look to the left hand side of your screen, you'll notice that the uh, telemetry has split. So you'll be able to follow the capsule and the booster separately. They reach Apogee at right about capsule the same time. Look good. You'll also notice on your screen, we've reached zero G. I know there are so many students and teachers watching today. We say hello to you, and we are also excited to learn more about your experiments and the results of those experiments. When the capsule has um, passed the Carmen line. Then there you have it. The capsule has passed the Carmen line. And um, yeah, we can't wait to learn more once NS35 uh, returns back to West Texas. I always think it's so cool to have that split screen where you can see Texas from the booster and we've got that long range camera that I know it's kind of hard to see, but we do have the booster and the capsule there. Capsule Apogee at 345,000 feet. Yeah, soon on the image on the right, we'll be able to see, oh, you can kind of see yeah. it. You can see two little dots. That is the capsule and the booster. They've reached Apogee, they've crossed the Carmen line, and now they are making their way back down to West Texas. And since we do have so many students watching today, Claire, do you want to kind of explain Four why minutes, 35. the booster will land first? Yeah, so the booster is going to land about two miles north of the launch pad, and it is more aerodynamic, so it is going to go through the air a lot faster than the capsule. Therefore, it's going to land before the crew capsule lands. That's right. The crew capsule, as you notice, is more of a teardrop drop shape. Booster descent nominal through 300,000 feet. We are watching the booster and the capsule from our long-range cameras out in West capsule Texas. Capsule body reads look good. Just over five minutes into NS-35. Booster descent nominal. The booster coming in under 200,000 feet. An autonomous landing is what you'll see, again, as Claire mentioned, about two miles from our launch pad. Capsule has reached atmospheric pierce point. Confirm booster forward fin deploys. So those forward fins are some of our aerodynamic surfaces that uh, help us fly and return back to the landing pad. Here comes the booster. Just past six and, a ma six and a half minutes into flight. Great shot there. Booster drag brakes deployed. And now we're coming up to my favorite part is when we will actually relight the engine and the Approaching booster lands. Start. Let's see it. Engine restart. Booster touchdown. Welcome home, New Shepherd Booster. Welcome home, New Shepherd Booster. Yes, beautiful touchdown and Starting great shots shaker. from our camera operators.
there you can see the capsule as we mentioned. Um, it takes the capsule a little longer because of its teardrop shape to return back to the West Texas desert. Capsule descent nominal. Stand by capsule drugs. Capsule drogues deployed. And there go the drogues shortly. Stand by means. You will see those main parachutes pull out as well. Mains deployed. And you may notice that our parachutes do look a little different from our last few missions. That's because we're flying our upgraded system today as a verification step prior to flying it on future astronaut missions. Capsule landing zone is within expected range limits. Yes, we have all three parachutes that have reefed out. Now, while the parachutes are essential for providing a gentle touchdown for the capsule, New Shepard also has a retro thrust system at the base of the capsule, which will make the final touchdown even smoother. The system fires just moments before touchdown to slow the capsule down to just one mile per hour. It kicks up a lot of that West Texas dust, but rest assured the capsule payloads today to feet, will have a nice enabled. soft touchdown. The capsule crossing the sunrise. What a beautiful shot there. We are 10 minutes into NS-35. Approaching retro thrust fire. Moments from the capsule touchdown. Capsule touchdown. There you have it. The capsule has touched down. Always incredible to see our new Shepard crew capsule. Start. Now, our crew recovery one. team is currently driving out to meet the capsule, and they're going to safe the vehicle and get it ready in order to um, get those payloads out and to um, be able to get our teachers and our students um, with all the information that they need from the experiments that flew today. So I know that is such an exciting moment right now.